Eminenz Cardinal Reinhard Marx mit Respekt und Liebe für German Theology, Karl Reinhard. Uh, his full power to teach uh, dogmatically something to the whole church. So nothing has said in all his pontificate. So we have the possibilities to be good. Where is this in Germany? Nowhere, because what does the what does the typical German tell you as soon as you talk about these matters? Yes, it would be very great if someone would build that up. Be the someone. Set up in only one direction by the team, which is orchestrating the synodal of me. The issue of the place of women in the church and the increase of ministry. The pro-life movement, even in America, where it's huge and vibrant, is a minority in terms of activism, in, in terms of its numbers. Good afternoon, Dr. As a German-American, uh, whose grandparents were born, not, were, not, were born not far from here in a little town called Kierweiler. I welcome this opportunity to speak to the situation in the German Catholic Church, which is beyond desperate and which has caused considerable concern among many American Catholics as well as German Catholics. The German bishop's synodal path appears to be an effort to create a church according to the image and likeness of the German bishops who apparently believe that they can define doctrine and establish their own national church, a sort of elitist nationalism that flies in the face of the universal Catholic Church of Jesus Christ with one faith, one sacramental system, and one discipline throughout the whole world. <clears throat> Statutes drafted in cooperation with the Central Committee of German Catholics threaten to posit the ordination of women and the abolition of priestly celibacy as countermeasures to the clerical sexual abuse crisis. But surely the German Catholic bishops realize that the ordination of women is a direct violation of God's law. Authoritatively reinforced in 1994 by Pope John Paul II in Ordinatio Sacerdotalis, where he writes, quote, the church has no authority whatsoever to confer priestly ordination on women, and that this judgment is to be definitively held by all of the church's faithful, end quote. What part of the church has no authority to break God's law do the German bishops fail to comprehend? Any push to ordain women would be an act of rebellion against the bride of Christ, worthy of Martin Luther himself which is why we have no alternative but to resist the synodal process here in Germany, which, if allowed to continue, will set dangerous precedents for the entire church. During World War II, my German-American father spent three and a half years of his life fighting in the U.S. Army against the National Socialism, the socialism that sought to change the world according to notions of German supremacy and superiority. Please, for God's sake, do not allow the German bishops to embarrass the fatherland again by creating a new order in the church based on notions of German supremacy over the word of God and the infallible teachings of the Catholic Church. Let history show that there was German resistance to this just as there was German resistance to the Nazis then. In 1956, my own grandfather, Joseph Matt, made a Knight of St. Gregory by Pius XI, took his duty as a Catholic journalist and newspaper publisher in America now. He, was, he immigrated from Germany to America. He took his duty to resist similar German aggression so seriously that he was awarded the Federal Meritorious Cross by the post-Nazi German government for his defense against Nazism. And it is in that spirit, in this spirit, of my grandfather and so many other Germans who resisted that we are here today to speak against the scourge of a German-led ecclesiastical totalitarianism. The last thing that the world needs right now is more rebellion against the Bride of Christ, against the Catholic Church, that we have seen, we've seen, we've seen that rebellion tear her apart over the past 50 years. And yet the German Episcopate's Synodal Assembly promises ex exactly that, more rebellion, when it threatens to review, review church teaching, consider church teaching that cannot be changed 
and can only be changed by an act of revolution and rebellion against the church herself. The German bishops would have us believe that abolishing clerical celibacy, for example, would also reduce clerical sexual abuse. But this is not only demonstratively false, it is dangerous in that it places liberal ideology above the protection of future abuse victims. Those who are called to the vocation of the single life, the consecrated virgins, the celibate clergy, they are not sexually repressed. They have made celibacy a gift which they willingly chose to give to their God. And to even suggest that they now require marriage in order to quiet the temptation to abuse children, child molestation. This amounts to a satanic affrontery to the very idea of religious vocation to the priesthood. It also recklessly fails to consider the millions of children in our sad world who are abused by their married parents. It is not a solution. Furthermore, since clerical sexual abuse most often involves priests preying on post-pubescent males, for example, high school students and seminarians, to suggest that abolishing celibacy will somehow reduce the same-sex attraction involved in the majority of the cases is, again, to reveal profound ignorance of both homosexuality and the nature of the, of the abuse crisis in the church itself. Finally, are the German bishops seriously suggesting that the health of the Catholic Church, already plagued by a massive priest shortage, that that health is going to be improved when the few remaining priests left in the church would all at once find themselves married and with a house full of babies to raise? Only a celibate male who knows nothing about marriage would suggest such an absurdity. So the bottom line is this. Abolishing celibacy will do precisely nothing to reduce the plague of clerical sexual abuse, and yet the German bishops are proposing it anyway, as if their own agenda somehow supersedes the, master, the, the magisterial authority of the church, the word of God and scripture, and the special charism of the priesthood itself. Because women priests and sexually active priests would also Protestantize the priesthood this entire German bishop's agenda will inevitably lead to defections among the faithful who will recognize this as the church's further surrender to the modern world and to the zeitgeist and a lack of resolve to adhere even to her own teachings and mandates. And if even the priests are no longer expected to live up to the challenges of their own vocations, why should anyone else? I thus add my voice to those calling upon the German people to act in the spirit of Klaus von Stauffenberg, Sophie Scholl, and Cardinal von Fallhaber to resist the new regime in the German Catholic Church, to refuse to pay the ecclesiastical tax, and to pledge fidelity to the immutable teachings of Holy Mother Church. What our world, drowning in sex and sewage as it is today, what it needs is the restoration of a strong moral Christian authority, the authority of the Catholic Church based on the law of God and the law of nature, defended by the self-sacrificing example of celibate priests for a thousand years, willing to deny themselves everything in order to bring the light of Christ, the Lumen Christi, into the darkness of the world. As a German-American Catholic, I therefore beg the German bishops not to proceed in this way. I plead with the German people to resist, and I call upon the Pope to condemn this with the full weight of his office. Thank you very much for listening.